My name is Kondwani Mwase, and this is 54 Lights. The next episode is All Access with Wendy Olenike. Salted caramel is one of our best sellers. Pistachio, red velvet's also a really good one. Okay, so how about one of each of the ones you just said? Uh, and I'll grab a, maybe an espresso at the same time. Yeah, single or double? A uh, single, please. Can I get you anything else? No, that's perfect. Coffee and macaroon in hand. I take a seat in the welcoming cafe. It's not your traditional bakery, but it has a fresh, modern feel. My, my, my purpose is to tell stories. Love and respect and honor the Nigerian culture, but I'm also extremely Canadian. Fire! Fire! <laughs> <laughs> and I don't let anybody dim that light. As usual, we're here to tell undertold stories out of Africa. Today's episode is a coup of epic proportions. We're sitting down with Toronto's own, Olenike Adeli. Ah, correction. We're sitting down with Wendy Olenike. Here. In part, is our conversation. My name is Olunike Adeliye, and I'm an actress, and I'm also a producer as well. Um, can you tell me about the origins of your name mm -hmm. and maybe like your background as well? Yeah, well, um, my full name really is Wendy Olunike Adeli. Right. Okay. My father named me. He is um, Nigerian um, and uh, we're from the Yoruba tribe. And um, so Wendy is actually a is, is, he, your, is they just is put an English name? name on top of it. Got yeah, it. yeah. Okay, like, okay. My dad fell in love with this like newscast woman that was black in in, in the seventies, and okay. her name was, was Wendy. Wendy something. Okay. So he was like he all he, lo he loved watching her on the news. Yeah. So he's like that's gonna be part of the name. This is gonna be. Okay. And Wendy means wanderer, invented for Peter Pan. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. I was gonna ask you. Well, yeah. I was gonna ask you what Olunike means. Olunike means um, God give me more love and joy. Oh, Adeli means yeah. crown of great honor and value. Do you do you feel that you live up to your name? Of course. I yeah. think I've lived beyond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've done it well. I've lived beyond. Like I could have just had it sitting there. I could have just continued going as Wendy, right? Yeah, for and no sure. one would sure. really know the, because every time I introduce myself, it's you definitely Olunike, and they're like, whoa. Yeah. And and then it becomes a conversation about my name, which right. I love because then there's an identity, there's a connection to right. it. Right. Like I've gone to Nigeria many times, yeah. you know, I love and respect and honor the Nigerian culture, but I'm also extremely Canadian. Too. And I, my mom is Jamaican. Your mom is Jamaican. Yeah, because they met in Toronto. Have you been back to Jamaica as well? Yeah, I was raised in Jamaica for about 10 years of my life, uh -huh, from like uh -huh. 1 to 11. And yeah. then you moved here? Then I moved back, yeah. Oh, uh, got it. Yeah, because my, my parents, they, they wanted me to um, be raised on the farm with my grandparents. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. a really, it's, it was a fantastic upbringing for yeah. children. Not only did I have that freedom of imagination, which I think developed into the artist that I became, 100%. right, but yeah. also um, the freedom of being a, ch a child and, and discovery and also work ethic because I had to also work on the farm too because yeah. I did a lot of things like harvest the land with my grandparents right. and sell the goods at the market. Yeah. So um, there was a real grounding in my in my in my 
raising. Yeah. So it's so good. Yeah, that's amazing. It allows me to be a very normal person. Yeah, I was going to say because you've done that. You've, Big time. you've done that. Big time. Because of the, the cultures that I come from, because yeah. of the love that I come from, yeah. like I, I was raised to be confident. So, you know, and of course, life does a thing of trying yeah. to dim that I light. Say it fights against that. Right, especially in um, North America, the first world, is it called, yeah. where they, they, where you are, you could possibly be seen as a second class citizen yeah. just yeah. because you're black. Yeah, you're not supposed to be that. Right, because right. of the history of that. But For I sure. come from really strong people. For so sure. it's really hard to dim that light and if it ever dimmed a little bit it was always flaming again because yeah. I'm reminded because of family um, sticking on the name so I don't want to pry into your personal life oh, but, but if, if I may I, I, I found online that your daughter's name is Alicia yes is that right Alicia where did that name come from I think, I uh, I think uh, Alicia is Russian Origins and it means noble ah yeah yes, yes. and she it does live up to that and Christy is her middle name <laughs> Awesome. And it's also the the surname of my grandfather's mother on the Jamaican side. Really? Christy. Christy. So, what's your story? By that I mean, what is your name? What, if anything, does it mean? My name, as you already may know, is Kondwani. K-O-N-D-W-A-N-I. Kondwani. Uncommon in Canada, but in my native homeland of Malawi, it is not unheard of. It means, be happy. Marcella K. From Senegal, not completely sure the complete, complete meaning. Both your parents are Senegalese? Both of them are Senegalese, yes. My name is Afia Hajiman, and my first name, Afia, means it's a female born on Friday. That's all it means. And it's spelled A F I A. I'm from Ghana, I'm a Shanti, mm -hmm. and Friday is. If yada, that's what it is. Friday means if yada in my language. Um, yeah. Silly question. Were you born on a Friday? I was born on a Friday. Ah. Exactly. So female born on a Friday. Have you ever? Your name isn't that difficult at all, actually. But have you ever felt a desire or a need to westernize your name? Yeah, I do actually. So that's why when somebody will ask me what is your name, I wouldn't say if yeah. Because honestly, the name is Efia, because back to Friday being Efiada, mm -hmm. I say my name is Efia, so then it's easier for them to pronounce it. We have it hard somehow, so yeah, just to make it easier for everyone else, Efia. <laughs> how, how, how was life before acting? It was really hard to integrate back into Canada when I came because it was like a new world yeah, for me because right? sure. I don't remember being I, I don't remember it at one yeah um, maybe yeah you were too young to exactly yeah. so it was hard because I never saw that I was different from anyone mm -hmm. because I grew up with a lot of different um, races and cultures in Jamaica because it's, it, it's it, there's an influx of yeah, like for sure. Chinese, yeah, Indian, um, Indian yeah, yeah, white, course, like because it's Scottish, Irish. Like I, I was raised around a different mix. different cultures, different mm -hmm. mixes. Mm -hmm. So it was ne and also majority black so when you switch. come to Canada <laughs> the standard of beauty was you know white and yeah. mostly blonde blue eyed yeah, and right. so you know you take a hit of of inferiority what started to change that again was um, when I was in grade six uh -huh. my music teacher noticed that I could sing she's yeah. like you know because I was always rambunctious and all over the place uh -huh. and people were like oh she's just not quiet <laughs> no one can figure out that because I'm an artist that's probably why yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know I was yeah. a class clown yeah, yeah, all of yeah. that and then the teacher was like wow you have a really beautiful voice would you like to try out for the play and uh -huh. then when I did that um, it, my first play was Oliver Twist yes. and I was the artful dodger and um, yeah and, and I was able to 
be who I was, yeah, big in the go, world, go and there. just go out there and perform, and everybody yeah. loved that. And then the following year, I was the lead. I was the, it was the princess and the dragon, and I was the princess. So that completely changed my perspective of where I sat in the world. That there was no, there was no one above me or be or below me that I was equal to. So that that those moments allowed you to say, well, wait a minute, this is this is accessible to me. Is that is that fair to say? It's accessible, and talent wins over everything. Your parenting style seems to be very uh, somewhat unique, but you're really letting your daughter express herself. Yes. Your parents. Is, was it the same thing? Yeah, was it the same thing? I'm, cur I'm curious. <laughs> no. Like, they had this fireball at home. Mm -hmm. What did they do? Well, I mean, like I said, they 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 were supportive just in different ways, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So they are supportive. Different time. Yeah, they are they are academic driven, mm -hmm. and that's it, right? Uh -huh. And so I, for a long time, I really didn't think that I was going to go into law because they're like, you're, you're fiery and, you know, because I used to debate on the debate team too. Say, so like, it's a, it's a, I'm an it. argument I, winner, right? So it. yeah, like I'm always like looking at all the details of how I can like mm -hmm. swirl my manipulation around so that, you know, so they're like, oh, she's a lawyer. She is a lawyer. That is exactly what she goes to do. <laughs> and my mom's like, yeah, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. I was like, and then somewhere in me, I was like, I don't want to do this. Right. right. I don't. And it was really hard for them to understand because they, it, it's like they say, how are you going to do this? This is yeah. That's a hobby. All these things that you did, like playing instruments and yeah. and sports and whatnot, those, those are hobbies. Yeah. And those possibly get you into schools for scholarships yeah. and stuff. They facilitate but, your path right. to that being a lawyer. That was fun. That was just for fun. But I was like, I, I know, no. I'm very talented, and I think I should pursue that, or I'm going to be extremely unhappy. Yeah. That's it's my purpose. My 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 purpose is to tell stories, and so, um, my styles with like parenting was, no, I'm not going to force anything on Alicia. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand my parents' desire for survival, like to make sure that you're surviving as a black female. I needed to have something that I didn't depend on anybody else for. Um, with my daughter, I felt that I can attack and have attack it, the parenting style in the same way for her to be independent and depend on herself, but with whatever she wanted to do, because whatever she wanted to do was going to make her happy. Your experience at the American Academy of, of uh, Dramatic Arts in New York, like how was how was that? You you left Canada, you went to New York, I believe. Mm -hmm. Went to New York, and did that help you build that discipline, or was no. it just yeah? You know it was I mean? sports. Was it? Yes. Any dancer or any athlete develops a discipline of like grueling discipline almost their whole lives because you start really early, right? Mm. And I think that transfers into whatever you decide to do. Got it. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I feel it's always important to put children in those activities. Yeah. Because then they, un they understand they inform teamwork the because, I mean, acting, theater, all it's all teamwork. I remember getting up so early before school, especially for track, and have to run around that track seven times before we even started practice. Yes, that was that was warm up. Yes, I remember our girls' soccer team. Our practice was playing against the boys' team. That's why we were undefeated because it was like child's play when we eventually was playing with yeah. the girls. The teachers always trained the girls with the boys. Interesting. Right. So it was like, yeah, so you're up early in the morning before school even starts. You're just training. Mm -hmm. So that stays with you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and even it stayed with me today because even when it comes to working out and stuff, it's just it's just in me. Even if I take a break for like months, you know, the body stays anyway. Um, but the, the but the. The discipline to go back to it is yeah. always there. It's just now it's become part of your routine. It's become part of who you are. It, that's part of your DNA as well. Yeah. That discipline. And it Whether just it, yeah. yeah. And it just bleeds through everything else. Everything else. So you know, like when you attack scripts or whatnot, mm -hmm. you know what needs to be the research that needs to be done. You know the methods that need to be applied. Mm -hmm. um, and and theater also, it, it it kind of like fine tunes and reinforces that discipline because it's much bigger discipline than it is to do film. 
home. Is it because TV. it's live or what? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. There and is it's no such a dance. take two, so to speak. Nope. Right. There is no take two, and you've got to you've got to memorize that entire play. Mm -hmm. It's not your lines. <laughs> Everybody else's, yeah. Right. Or the, sorry, it's the whole. Well, you have to know everybody's. Yeah. Stuff. You've got to know not just cues, but you've got to know you've got to know what they're saying to you. You've got to listen to everything. You've got to be able to like if they say, because so a lot of teachers that I trained with, they're like switch roles. Oh. And then what do you do if you don't know theirs, awesome. right? Right. So it's like that <laughs> discipline great. of changing up the brain to be able to adapt to anything happening. You know, grabbing on improv. So, um, yeah, like that, the theater gives you that. So it teaches you to listen as well as to express. Is that, yes. is that a fair uh, paraphrasing of what you Absolutely, said? Absolutely, yeah. You did something that's a little bit different in that you went to the States for school, but you came back to Canada. Mm -hmm. what, what dictated that choice? I've gone to America, and mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, a, it's great as well. The opportunities are probably even bigger but they're not the only blueprint. Mm -hmm. And I, it was very important to me that I was going to make it in my own country first before I expand. I wanted to be known as a Canadian, you know, and then, and also Nigerian and Jamaican. And right. I found that, like, my identity in those three countries would be more set when it was time to expand globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to be something different and not just, oh, she was discovered in America or anything. Or, you know, I just... I thought, why not do this here? It also, also, it was advised to me by the school in New York to go back to your own country and to make Canada. it big. Yeah, and because you also need to be at the top of your country in order to even get a visa to go to the States. Got it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it didn't make sense. I was going to go through the grind and grind and grind to finally get, like, permanent status. And find it. No, just come here and start the work here mm -hmm. and that's what it did and then eventually I was able to get sponsored by American company and have a visa and, and, and be able to go back and forth right right, right right but like but but initially it was about being identified as Canadian got it and and you had that from early days of being in New York you used that was always the well, yeah, plan always a plan and my my professors were really great because um, they encouraged me to know a lot of black Canadian playwrights Mm -hmm. which I didn't really know much about yeah. when I went there. It was like, cause I was always influenced by America and what yeah, the content I, that yeah. they had. And yeah, my professors were like, do you know uh, Maxine Bailey? Do you, you know what yeah. I mean? And like, I was like, huh? <laughs> when I came back to Toronto, I finally just met Maxine. And I was like, I think I know your name from somewhere. I didn't even know that she ran TIFF or anything. Right. I didn't even know that. Right. I didn't know she was Cameron Bailey's sister. Right. I just was like, where have I heard your name before? Mm. And then she was like, I don't know. And I was like, I got to figure this out. And then one day I woke up and I'm like, she's the playwright that yeah. my professor school, yeah. in New York told me about. Right. And then I reached out to her and I was like, I know where I know your name from. And she was like, that is the most amazing connection I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so much better than, aren't you the head of TIFF? You were the first... Uh, Black Lady Macbeth. That must have been, you know, when I read through your litany of of accomplishments, I was like, oh, that's that's pretty big, because now you're you're not compartmentalizing as only black roles or traditionally black roles. You're now crossing this 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 barrier that says, oh, this is only known as a white role. Right. So, you know, am I making? I guess that was a big thing for me when I was reading. But for you, what were the main ones? Um, I mean, uh, even with like French Immersion that was yeah. directed by um, Kevin Tierney. Um, and uh, God rest his soul, he just passed. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's literally one of, if not my favorite director. Director, yeah. Because when he casted me, um, he literally, he casted me as a Jamaican flight attendant that is going to Montreal to go to a French immersion school because I needed to know French and I was mixing it up with Patois mm -hmm. and nobody on the plane can understand me. So this was like my last chance so I could keep my job. Right. And so I'm this Jamaican yeah. person. But he cast me and said, Olenike, the script is just a suggestion. I want you to do whatever you want to do. Because you know this culture, this language more than I do. Really? So I want you to create whatever you want. He and, gave you that freedom. Oh, man. 
And then I ended up getting nominated for Canadian yeah. uh, uh, Canadian Comedy Awards. Right. Yeah. Right. So he he wanted me to be myself. You know, he wanted me to be an extension of my mother. That's got to be very uncommon. Mm, yeah. Unless you get to a certain level. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But usually mm-hmm. it, it's pretty controlled um, well, yeah. in the beginnings of your career. And that was still fairly the beginnings yeah. of my career. And that freedom that he gave me, I, I have to thank him because from there I was like, I had the confidence to say, I've got some ideas and, you know, let me run it by you. I wasn't afraid to try things. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was a huge... That was a huge um, milestone, was right. being able to play a Jamaican character. Right. And definitely McBeth is one of them as well, because Lady M, I, I played her as a Nigerian Jamaican Lady M. So I definitely had the verbiage of, of Shakespeare and, and the rhythms. Yeah. Um, but if she kissed her teeth, she did. You're very studious. You're very disciplined in that. But now you're telling me about this side where you're bringing you're bringing Olenike to the role. Mm-hmm. That how is that how does that journey happen? And then how does that conversation happen with the director or whomever is owning the script? Now you're at a place where you can you can have that open dialogue. Yes, um, mm-hmm. and I try to bring that into the audition room. Ah, yeah. Okay. To give them something different. So right different. off the bat, right is, off the bat, I give yeah. them something different. And they know who they're ta- dealing with right away. Right. So I I bring my cultures in That's because great. I mean like my coaches have like you know David Rotenberg, Michelle Lonsdale Smith, um, Gregory Simmons. These are amazing like teachers and mentors in my life. That's always said, show up with you. You're a black like African yeah. Caribbean woman whether you give them the accent or not that's first that's who you are yeah. that's who you are so never leave that behind and you're also a mother don't ever not have your daughter like 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 figuratively in the room with you mm-hmm. so it was also trained to like if i'm if i need to walk away from this career walk away you know have the I need, strength to do that have the strength to walk away if it compromises your integ- integrity and your identity I mentioned before that Olenike is a bright light, full of energy. As you've heard, and will continue to hear, that's an accurate characterization. What's important to further note is that her talent had been cultivated and has culminated in a story that's ongoing. Her resume, selectively, reads as follows. She had roles in John Q and Undercover Brother. 2003, Blue Murder. 2008, The Border. 2009, The Big One, Flashpoint. 2011, another important one, French Immersion. 2012, Being Human. And 2017, Boost. And CBC's Working Moms. So like there was a there's a, there was a journey that I went on to it and I think it started in New York because when I went there my hair was permed you know I would wear weaves a lot and then nothing against weaves or any of that because even sometimes I love wearing my Afro wig and mm-hmm. whatnot I'm not against any of this but like there was a journey of the permed hair yeah, that I sure. took like I I remember going to class and I was looking around like. Even when I was in theater and stuff, I was like, all these black girls are natural. This what? I feel like I'm not a part of this. What's happening? And then I went through the journey of really kind of diving into my culture. And so the hair was shaved off and yeah. it, I began again. And, and so that beginning again helped me to find my, my identity. Um, just quickly, life outside of quote unquote acting, and you've kind of answered this already from an artistic perspective, mm-hmm. but uh, third, third world awareness, yeah. 
Um, what yeah, inspired we, that then? Well, I've always wanted to get in the philanthropic world. I've always wanted to, and I didn't really know what angle. I didn't know who to trust, what mm. companies. Like I was researching for a very long time, mm. and what propelled me finally propelled me into that. I was going through a divorce, and I was like, I am not going to be focusing on this divorce. I need to put all of this energy into not just my art, but into other people to help other people. And so I got involved. There, there's schools that they've developed there, and then we started to develop the arts program. I was going to say, kids. and the art, it, it, the art is a, um, a a big thread within the uh, within the, this program. Yes, yes, we developed a really great art program for the kids with mm-hmm. dance, with singing, with stenciling, like you know, all kinds of art. And every year, it just it's more, just more is developed. And we also very adamant about their sports. They're like the sports right. that right. Uh, we incorporate they are putting um, like drawing basketball court into their yard getting a net up we play so much with them and help to develop them as the kids that they should be um, so yeah like that I think like the, the love of art and humanity led that that's, led that's... me to that. So there you have it. The conversation continues. As always, I have to start with my guest, Olanike. Thank you for your candor. Thank you for your openness. And thank you for your complete and utter devotion to your craft. We are better for it. I'd also like to thank the folks over at Delhi Says. If you're ever in the King Street West area, you gotta check them out. Just got it. Words. Beautiful. Words. Beautiful. Is my weapon. <laughs> no matter how they come out, I'm just learning <laughs> they, they to be more eloquent. Because <laughs> me, I'll be like, fire, fire. Burn them with fire. <laughs> What's your guilty pleasure? I am naked in my house, Mm -hmm. just watching Netflix and eating some good food. (laughs) That is my guilty pleasure, is the time spent by myself. Uh, Canada, US, or other? Other. The other would be? Jamaica or Nigeria. Uh, Prince or Michael Jackson? Michael Jackson. Theater or film? Theater. LeBron or Curry? Curry. Beer, scotch, or wine? Scotch. In the movie about Olenike, who, who plays you in the movie? Ooh. Ooh. Deny Gorilla. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Randomly, what's the name of the film? Wendy the Wanderer. <laughs> 